again, I just want to say good morning to everyone again. And I hope everyone has had, you know, a good week. Everything's been going well with everyone. And um, uh, last week we talked a little bit about prayer. And that prayer is very, very important. And we need to be people of prayer. Prayer is very important. We have to be people of prayer. Um, but this week as I was praying, I feel like the Lord wanted me to take a step back and maybe speak about something that probably should have been shared first, in a way. And so this morning I just want to just talk about certain things that are very important and vital to our walk with the Lord. And I love each and every one of you. And so sometimes when I say things, Victoria tells me I can be a little bit harsh sometimes. I don't think so, but she says I am. But if I am, it's out of love. I do know that because I'm concerned about the way people walk their walks with the Lord. I'm concerned about it. You know, there are things that we should be doing that we don't do. There are things we shouldn't be doing that we do. And so I'm very concerned about these things. And in the Bible, uh, it gives another, you know, name for God. And that is Lord. And the word Lord, in fact, in the New Testament, it is over 700 times that it refers to Jesus as Lord. Over 700 times. So if the Bible says it over 700 times, it's probably pretty important if it talks about that. So I want to talk about that today, about Jesus as Lord. And in our minds, we all say things like, you know, Jesus is Lord, but do our actions really show that he is really Lord of our life? Because, you know, in the book of James, it says... Don't just be hearers of the word, but doers of it. But in there it also says, it talks about um, faith and works. Mm -hmm. Faith by itself seems to be dead. It's not accompanied by those works. The works don't save us, but those actions show us about our true faith. And those things in which we walk in. And so we, nowadays we assume that people say Jesus is Lord, we assume that people know that Jesus is Lord, but today it's not something we should just assume. Because I don't think we truly understand the Lordship of Jesus Christ sometimes, in the way in which we should. And the word Lord means Master. It is basically, it's a word that they would use back then to refer to like a landowner. They were Lord of that land. They were Lord over it. And so the word in the Greek means master, to own something. It means to have ownership of something. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in Luke chapter 6. And here in Luke chapter 6, I think it gives a very good example about Jesus being Lord. In Luke chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 46 of Luke chapter 6. And so Jesus is addressing the people here. And he says in verse 46, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? So Jesus asked a question. And in there, he asked this question. And he asked, Why do you call me Lord, and yet you don't do what I tell you to do? And so right there, what does that tell us about the word Lord? It means that if someone is Lord... He expects you to do what He says. If He is Lord, you obey. You do what He says. He's Master. He's Lord. And so when Jesus asked this question, He asked, Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? And then in verse 47, He says, As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and put them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man who built his house and dug deep and laid the foundations on the rock. When the flood came and the torrent struck the house, but it did not shake because it was well built. 
But the one who hears the word and does not put them into practice is like a man who builds his house on the ground or on the sand without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So it was completely destroyed. And Jesus tells that in the context of he asks, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? If you don't do what I say, you're like the foolish person who built his house on the sand. But if you obey what I say, that means that I am Lord of your life, that you're following me, and it's going to be good with you. Like the song, it is well. It will be well with us if we do what he says. So he explains that this is foundational to our faith, that he is Lord. He is Lord. He's Master. We do what He says. Whenever I was growing up, and probably many of you were growing up, there seemed to kind of be this idea in Christianity that people would receive Jesus as Savior, and it's like they would go, you know, we receive Jesus as Savior and go, oh great, you know, that's good because now I'm not going to hell. And it's almost like it was like following Jesus was like this optional thing. It was like we could get him to be our savior, but we don't have to follow him. It was like an option thing, like it comes after salvation. Just an option we have. And I know whenever I got saved, I didn't truly understand this. It was, I came, I believed in Jesus for the forgiveness of my sins, and I was like, okay, I'm good. I don't got to do anything else. I didn't understand about the following but in the Bible, it's not an option between you can have him as Savior and then the option to follow is if he's Savior, he's Lord, and you follow him. There's not an option there. But it seems like we take that in our lives today of, well, there's like this option there. It's like I can have a choice of lordship if I want it. If I want it, I'll follow him, but I don't have to. And I know you all agreed with you can't have one without the other. That He is Lord. Whether we, He's Lord. We want Him as Savior, but He's also Lord. Many people agree. But if He is Lord and our Savior, that means that our lives should reflect that. That He is Lord. But it seems like what we do is we say, well, this is what I desire. This is what I want to do. So God must be okay with it. So I'm going to say this is what I want to do and I'm going to say the Lord's okay with it so I'm going to do it. It's almost, and or sometimes we go, well, this is what I want to do so let me read the Bible to make sure this isn't like a blatant sin. Okay, it's not a blatant sin. It must be okay. I can go do it. Whenever that's not the way of thinking that we should have. Our way of thinking should be what does He want me to do because He is Lord. Not what I want. What does He want? It's all about Him. He's Lord. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus and what Jesus spoke here. Because I really want God to speak to us today. Because I want to make sure that we haven't fallen into the idea of we can just be saved and we ain't got to do anything else. All throughout the Bible, it's a decision to follow Jesus. When you get saved, trust Him as Savior, you follow Him as Savior. It's very clear about that. So if you flip over a few more verses, a few more chapters in uh, Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9. I want to read this and I want you to really listen to what it says in verse 23. This is what Jesus was saying. He said, Then he said to them all, not just a few, not just the preachers, not just the teachers, not just the evangelists, not just the few, he said to all of them, whoever wants to follow after me, whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me, must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. He said it to everyone, not just a few. He said everyone who comes after me, who wants to follow me, who wants to be my disciple. In a way, he said, if you want to follow me, there is requirements to follow me. He said, you must deny yourself. Let them deny themselves. 
Do you understand that being a Christian is about denying self? It's a big part of it. We don't do so good at that in this culture today of denying ourselves anything. But it's about denying ourselves. That literally means you say no. You don't do it. You say no to yourself. Your body, your flesh might want to do it, but you say no. I'm not doing it. No. It's not what God wants me to do. I deny myself. And we live in a time where people say God gave me these desires so I should be able to act on them. God gave me these desires. This is how I feel. So I should be able to act on them. But that's not what Jesus says here. Jesus says you follow me, that means you deny yourself. You deny yourself. That means your dreams and your feelings and your desires, you deny them, follow Jesus. You want Jesus as your Lord. You have to deny yourself. He says, if anyone wants to come after me, let them deny themselves. But what we do is we have dreams and we have feelings. This is what I want to do. And so we try to justify it in a way where God seems to be okay with it. And also, in the way we make decisions, it's not about denying ourselves. It's about, almost it's really about, how far can I go without sinning? Instead of truly denying ourselves, taking up our cross, following Him. Where when we make decisions, it's, this is what I want. I want this job making this much money, so God will be okay with it. And we start with what I want, and then we go to God instead of going to God first. And saying, God, what do you want? What job do you want me to have? What if God wants you to take a job making less money? You want to take one with more money. He wants you to take one with less money. Which do you choose? Do you do what you want to do, or do you want to do what God wants you to do? If He is Lord, you take the one that He wants you to do. Because He is Lord. And in America, I don't think we really understand what it means to have Jesus as Lord. Because in this country, it's a free country. Which means when we accept Jesus, there's no cost that comes immediately with it. Like in other countries, where when you follow Jesus, you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That means you lose everything. You lose your job, you're kicked out of your family, you lose everything. Here, there's no cost like that. That happens immediately. And so sometimes I think that's why we don't understand about Him being Lord. Because he's, if He is Lord, that means every decision we make is based on what does He want, not what I want. Because we deny ourselves. That means what job does He want me to have? What car does He want me to drive? What house does He want me to have? But we don't ever ask those types of questions. We just go, this is what I want. It's not a sin. God's okay with it. Instead of truly thinking, what does God want for me? Jesus said, if anyone wants to come after me, let them deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow me. And he said to take up your cross daily. Not just once in a while. Daily. We don't like hearing daily. We don't want to do it daily. That means deny yourselves, pick up your cross daily. Not just on Sunday. Daily. Every day. It's a decision that we make. And I want you to think about Jesus. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying to the Father. He's in the Garden right before He went to the cross. And remember, He was in agony. He was in this deep anguish, so much anguish that He was sweating drops of blood. So much that He was sweating drops of blood. That's a deep anguish that none of us know about. That type of anguish. And he says, he's praying, Father, if there is any other way, let this cup pass from me. He says, all things are possible with you. If there is any other way, take this from me. But then he says, but not my will, but your will be done. Jesus showed us what it means to deny ourselves. He showed us about denying ourselves. Where he was begging God the Father, let this pass from me. Is there another way? But he said, not my will, but your will be done. We don't know about that today.
Do we know what it means to deny ourselves in that way? We know what it means to deny ourselves in that way if we love someone. You know, like with our kids. We'll sacrifice for our kids to give them what they want. We'll sacrifice them. For our wives, for our husbands, we'll sacrifice. We'll make those sacrifices. We are to love God in a deeper way than that. How much more should we deny ourselves for God? That's the way we have to be of deny ourselves where we are saying, God, this is not what I want, what I desire. But your Lord, I'm going to deny myself. Your will be done, not my will be done. And I'm going to follow you. It doesn't matter what I want. In Luke 9, Jesus goes on. In verse 24. He goes on right after he says this and he says, so in verse 23 he says, whoever wants to follow after me must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Then verse 24 says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for me will save it. He says, whoever desires to save their life will lose it. And I get it. Because we like to be in control. We want to be in control of things. Who here doesn't like to be in control? I like to be in control. Especially when I'm driving. I don't. It's okay to ride with other people, but it's, I'd rather be in control driving. Victoria's a good driver, but she scares me. Because I'm not in control of the car. <laughs> but she is a good driver, but it scares me because I'm not in control of the car. And there's certain things in our life that we're like that when it comes to God. We don't want to give Him control and let Him take over. Because that means we have to do something that we don't want to do. There's certain things in our life that it's like, okay God, you can have everything, but not this. Not this. And it's almost like we want to save certain areas in our lives where it's like, we want to be we want to have Jesus, that Savior, but we still want to hold on to the things of the world and sometimes hold on to our sins and not give it to Him. We're trying to hold on and savor these things of the earth, these like, you know, these pleasures or whatever it is to enjoy these things, and we're trying to savor it, hold on to it, and save it here instead of giving it up to Him. He says, Whoever wants to save their life, they're going to lose it. But those who lose their life, who surrender their life to Jesus, will save it. Those who follow and chase after Him to save it. But it seems like we don't know anything about these things here today because we're so concerned about ourselves and building our kingdom. This is what I want. This is what I desire. And there's no thought about what does God truly want for my life? What does He truly want? Will you really pick up your cross and follow Him every single day? Because in doing that, that is, that means it's like, well, every day, God, what do you want me to do today? You know, you want me to go and everyone I talk to, tell them about you today? And let me get rejected? I don't feel like doing that. But your Lord... So I'm going to do it if that's what you want me to do. You want me to walk away from this pleasure I have? I really don't want to. That's the last thing I want to do. But your will be done, not my will be done. You want me to pray? You want me to seek you? I have all these other things I need to do, but I'm going to deny myself. I'll get to them. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to pray. Because your will be done. Even in things that God, you said it was wrong. I think it's okay. But I'm going to come under you and submit to you and know that you're right and I must be wrong. It's your will, not my will be done. How often do we really think about that when we make decisions, any type of anything in our life, do we think about that? Lord, what do you want? We don't think about those types of decisions. I want you to think about what you cherish most here on the earth. Is there something here you truly cherish here on the earth? Whatever it is, and just think. Would you be willing to give that up 
if the Lord asks you to give it up? It's a very hard thing to think about because there are many things here that I love on the earth too. And it's like if God wanted me to give that up, would I be willing to give it up freely? It's a hard thing to deny yourself in that way. But I remember in Genesis the story about Abraham. Abraham was going to sacrifice his only son, the promised son, the son whom God said the promise is going to come through your son Isaac, the person that Abraham valued most. And he did not withhold his son from God. He did not withhold anything from God. He trusted God by faith, knowing that God could even raise the dead. And by faith, Abraham lived his life. Where on the earth, he lived in a tent. He never built a house for himself. He lived in a tent. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but the promised land that God had promised him, Abraham was living in that promised land. He never built a house. He just roamed around living in a tent. Because he trusted in God. It was by faith. By faith he did these things. But here we are trying to have both. Trying to be in God's kingdom but also still have everything of the world. We're trying to save our lives here instead of denying ourselves and truly following after him. What would your life really look like if you were truly sold out following after him? But we don't like that because if we let him do that, that means he might send me somewhere that I don't want to go. He might want me to do something that I don't really want to do. But do we really, really, truly chase after him? Or is it, this is what I want, so this must be what God wants. Then in verse 25, he says, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world? yet lose or forfeit their very soul. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in, the, in His glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. So He's trying to reason with the saying, look, if you're going to hold on to these things on the earth, what good is it? What is that going to profit you at the end? What good is it if you gain the whole entire world, yet forfeit your very soul? Then later in verse uh, 57, later in verse 57, it says, As they were walking along the road, a man came to him and said, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Then he said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the, let the dead bury their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. That's how Jesus responded to people. These people who said, Lord, I will follow you. This is how Jesus responded to them. Very different than the way we talk about it here in the church today. Where we're begging people to believe in Jesus, you know, asking people, you know, accept him. And they're like, okay, I guess I'll accept him. And then we go, that's great. Good job. Great. But here there are people begging Jesus to let, they're begging Jesus to let them follow him. It wasn't Jesus asking, will you come follow me? He was, they were begging Jesus to let them follow him. And he doesn't say, oh, that's great. Come on, come after me. Follow me, be my disciple. No, he tells them the cost of what it really is going to take to follow Jesus, to follow him. He says, are you sure you want to follow me? Because I'm homeless. I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Another one, he says, you know, he comes, you know, I want to follow you, but, you know, let me first go bury my dad. And he goes, no, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. Another one says, let me first tell my family goodbye. And he says, no, 
No one who looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. Seems kind of harsh. Doesn't it? Seems a little harsh what Jesus said there. And it is true that God is a God of grace. But when people read that, they sometimes think that the Bible contradicts itself. Where it's almost like we are saved by grace. And we are saved by grace. And we think since we are saved by grace, then it's like, well, why do I need to follow Him? It seems like that's no longer grace anymore if I have to follow Him. But that way of thinking means that we don't truly understand the grace that God has given us. The grace that God has given us is to see who He really is. Who Jesus truly is. That He is this amazing King. And it's like, yes, I want to come under Him. I want to follow Him. I want Him as my King. And I want you to just think about this statement. Okay, because I feel like this is the statement that a lot of people make. Maybe not so much by their words, but by their actions they make this statement. Of... I want to enter your kingdom, but I don't want you as king. Does that make any sense? No. no, it doesn't. That's what we do. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want him as my king here on the earth. I want to be in your kingdom, make it to heaven, but I don't want you as my king. That is what we're saying when we say that he's my savior, but I'm not following, I'm not chasing after him. It's like we want to get in, but we don't want to do what it takes. We don't want to follow Him. Like, it's this thing that we think is optional. We can have Him as Savior, but not as Lord. Just if I want Him to, I can have Him later. You know, where people make these rational thoughts of, you know, later in my life, then I'm going to get spiritual. When I get closer to the end, then I'm going to start reading my Bible, then I'll start praying, then I'll start doing these things. No, when you accepted Jesus, you made a decision to follow Him that day. Because you're done with your old life and you're following after Him. Whereas, Lord, I'm picking up my cross and I'm following, I'm chasing after You. But is He really Lord of your life? <coughs> because sometimes I don't think we truly understand and get it. Because... If we truly understood and got it, we would live differently. If He is Lord, we'd pray. We'd seek Him in prayer. Not just a quick five-minute prayer. We would seek after Him in prayer. If He is Lord. If He is Lord, we would read our Bible. If He is Lord, we'd come to church. If He is Lord, any time the bill is open, we'd be here if we could. If He is Lord, we would be seeking to save the lost people. If He is Lord. But He's not Lord, so we don't do those things. Is He really Lord of our lives? If He's Lord, we'd be getting around other believers as much as we could. We'd be fellowshipping with Him, other believers, if we truly believe that He was Lord. And I want you to truly understand what I am saying to you today. That He has to be Lord. He cannot just be Savior. And <clears throat> I didn't truly understand this for the longest time. Of When I got saved, it was, I don't want to go to hell, so I'm going to trust in Jesus as my Savior. And no one ever told me about prayer, about reading my Bible. It was, accept Jesus as your Savior, show up to church. That's what it seems like I was taught. So that's what I did. And in that, I had no fellowship with him. I didn't really know him. I knew about him. But I didn't really know him. And it was almost like I seemed like everything was okay until he finally got me to understand. Until I finally actually started reading the Bible and understanding, no, it's not just about him as Savior. He is Savior and I am thankful. I thank God that he is my Savior. But He's also Lord. And I thank God that He is Lord. But in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 21, it says, this is what Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one 
who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's very similar to the passage in Luke where he says, Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? And here he is saying, he is trying to tell everyone here that not everyone who calls me Lord is going to enter the kingdom because they don't do the will of my Father. They say it with their mouth, He's Lord, but they never really submitted to Him and to do what He says. And so today there are a lot of people who are Christians that call Him Lord, but their actions don't treat Him as He is Lord. Then it goes on in verse 22. He says, Many will say to me on that day, Did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out many demons, and in your name perform many miracles? I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoer. He didn't say just one or two, just a few. He said many. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, didn't I do these things? Didn't I do this? And he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. So many people, it seems like they come and they just pray a prayer and commit, you know, He's my Savior now. Go on and not do anything about it. What Jesus is saying here is He's saying that you can't just call Him Lord and not do what He says. You can't just do that and think everything is okay. And I'm worried because it says that many at the end will tell me, Lord, Lord, and think that they're good, and he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. It's almost like they'll say, but wait, I prayed this prayer, I accepted you as Savior. You know, I got baptized. I went to church. I didn't cuss. You know, I didn't do any of those bad, sinful things. And he'll turn and say, I never knew you. You didn't ever do the will of my Father. You never obeyed me. You didn't do what I said. What I said. <coughs> and I don't want to be that person who never did what he said. And I don't want that to be that person at you at the end who thinks that they were following him and truly wasn't. Who just called him Lord but didn't really mean it. They just did what they wanted to do. Still holding on to things of, of their life that they wanted to hold on to. We've got to get serious and change about what we're doing because it is a very, very big deal about having Him as Lord and not just Savior. All throughout the Bible, this is a calling for people to follow Him, not just accept Him as Savior. In, uh, in John's Gospel, at the end of John, there is a story here about Peter in John 21. And so Jesus asked Peter, he asked him three times, he goes, you know, do you love me? Peter goes, yes, Lord, I love you. He asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Jesus kept telling him, feed my sheep, do these things. And then this is what Jesus tells him at the end. He said, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. You know all things. You know I love you. And then in verse 18, he, Jesus says, you know, feed my sheep. He says, very truly I tell you, when you were young, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted to go. But when you are old, someone else will stretch out your hands and someone else will lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. He told Peter, you deny yourself, you pick up your cross, you follow me. In a way. What do we know about that type of coming under and submitting to God in that type of way? Somehow we've got this idea that God wants to bless me here on the earth. Because that's what I want. But what does God want? What does God truly want? That means it doesn't matter what my dreams are, what I desire, I'm coming under Him and what does He want for me and for my life. I have to submit and obey Him. 
That means what job does he want me to drive? What what job does he want me to do? That's what I'll do. You know, you want me to quit watching this TV show? I don't want to, but I will because I'm submitting to you. I just want to follow you because you're more valuable than anything else here on the earth. I'll give it up, whatever it is. My house, my car, my money, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I can't take it with me anyways. <coughs> what about this? But I feel like what we try to do is we're driving along down the road. You know, on the road to life, we're driving down the road and then we see Jesus. And it's like, I need Jesus. So what we do is we pull up beside him and we pop the trunk and tell him to get in the trunk. <laughs> Hop in the trunk. I'll come get you when I need you. You can't sit up here in the you know, up here in the seat with me. You get back there in the back, and whenever I need you, I'll come and get you. But He is the Lord, the King of the universe, and He does not come to us like that. We think He serves us. We serve Him. He doesn't come and serve us. It's all about His will. That's why many people, we pray for people to be healed. And there are people that God touches and heals. But there's other He doesn't. And we don't understand because we're thinking at it in a natural perspective and in our minds and what we desire, but what is His will for them? What's His will for us? He may heal us, He may not. Either way, we'll be good. We endure the suffering here and it's better for us in the end. But we go and we come and we want to put him in the trunk and we'll pull him out when we need him. When bad things happen, I'll go get him. But the thing is, we can't even tell him, hey, get in the back seat. You're welcome in my car. We can't even tell him, come and sit in the passenger seat. No, when we choose to follow him, we say, we get out and give him the keys and say, you drive. You know, we go here. There's the key. You drive. You go. I'm following you. You're the Lord of this body now. It's not about me. It's all about you. This was purchased with a price. The precious, the precious blood of Jesus has purchased this. With a price. So it's no longer what I desire for this body. It's all about what He desires for it. And it's a very scary thing because we're not in control. Because that means He can send me and move me and do things with me that I don't want to do. Told Peter. He told Peter, this is the way you're going to die, but you follow me. So today we have to make a decision. Are we truly going to follow him in that way or not? There's not really an option there of, if I want to, I can follow him. When we trusted in him, we follow him. And that takes great faith to follow him in that way. But I think about baptism. And when we were baptized, what was baptism saying? It was saying, I'm dying to myself. And I'm being raised with Christ. That it's the death of me. I've been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. That's what we were saying. And in this culture, it's like we value our feelings very much. Our feelings, our desires. But Jesus is Lord, and that means that He's going to ask us to do things sometimes that we don't feel like doing. And a good test is to just think and ask yourself, when is the last time that you did something that you didn't want to do, but you knew God wanted you to do? Can you even think of anything where you went against what you wanted to do because you felt like God wanted you to do it? It's a very deep question to ask. And if we can't think of anything, then maybe Jesus might not be Lord of your life. Do you understand what it means to have Him as Lord? You made a decision. You surrendered. It's all about Him. And I can think of many times in my life where I knew He wanted me to do something. I didn't do it. But I can also think of times in my life where I knew He wanted me to do it and I didn't want to do it and I did it anyways because I knew He wanted me to do it. 
That's the biggest key. Is he Lord or not? That is the first step that we have to take. Is that he is Lord. Count the cost. To truly follow him. To truly obey what he is saying. And the point is, is that if we don't start with Him as Lord, and we're not going to pray, we're not going to read our Bible, we're not going to do these things we should be doing. It has to start with He is Lord, we submit to Him, deny ourselves. And in doing so, then we'll pray, we'll read our Bible. We'll chase after the things He wants us to do if He is Lord. And so I want us to understand the cost today of truly following Jesus. That it is a cost. And so today what I want us to do is I want us to have a, a time of prayer. Time of reflection. Just if you're holding anything back from Him, give it to Him today. Don't leave here still holding on to it. We've got to give it to Him. We've got to get in the Word and we've got to pray. Because as we get in the Word and we pray, He reveals those things to us. That we need to clean up. We need to get out of our lives. And so I've been praying that the Holy Spirit would reveal these things to us today so we can get them out. And be renewed, be transformed. It's not about us. It's all about what He wants us to do. We can no longer make decisions based about what I feel like what I want to do. So I deny myself, I pick up my cross every single day and follow Him. And it is very, very difficult to do that some days. But when you are following Him in that way, when you are praying, when you are reading your Bible, you have a great sense of peace there. Because you follow Him in that way, you truly know where you're going. You truly know, you can feel His presence, you truly know him. And so I want us to pray today and just think about these things and just have a moment to really just think and pray about these things. Is He really Lord of our lives? Because if He is not Lord of our lives, then what are we doing? Why do we come to church if He's not Lord? Why do we do these things if He is not Lord? He is Savior, but He is Lord. He's both. He's not just Savior. And we do what we want. He's Lord. And we come under Him. We submit to Him. What does He want us to do? So take time here this morning to pray. If you want to come to the altar, you're welcome to come to the altar and pray. And then I'm going to close us in prayer. But we just need to just take time and just pray and think about that. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just... Lord, we're here today and Lord, we want to submit and come under You. Lord, whatever you want for our lives, let us do that. If you want us to quit our job, Lord, we'll quit, we'll follow you. Lord, you want us to stay, we'll stay, we'll follow you. Lord, move us where you want us to go. Lord, you've placed people in our lives that we need to witness to <clears throat> and tell them about the gospel, about you. Press it upon our hearts. Help us to be obedient, to speak to them. Lord, here today, if there is anything we're holding back from you, anything we're trying to save here on the earth, help us to give it freely to you, whatever it is, Lord. Lord, keep us in prayer, keep us in reading your word, because, Lord, when the difficult times come, we can be able to stand and trust and know that you're going to take care of us. Lord, give us faith that we need to have. Give us faith to trust in you. Lord, it's scary to just give complete control over to you, but Lord, we trust and we have faith that when we give it to you, that you know what's best. And so Lord, no matter what comes, I'm going to follow you. It's what we're saying here today. If blessings come, I'll follow you. But Lord, even if the worst comes and suffering comes, I'm still going to follow and chase after you. But that is my heart. It's all about you. So Lord, convict us of these things today. Help us to leave here 
change. And to get in your word, to pray, to do these things, to live a life all about you and not about me. So Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.